So I don't usually talk about celebrities or famous narcissists. I don't know why. I'm not generally drawn to those topics. But I am making an exception here because I just wanted to quickly talk about Meghan Markle and and Harry, Prince Harry, because I'm sure many people have opinions on, on that relationship and whether Meghan might be a narcissist. And I just wanted to give my my two cents on that because I've I've had people in my life and circumstances in my life where I can draw some very close parallels to to what I see happening between Mary, um, Meghan and Prince Prince Harry. So I mean, the first thing is narcissists target people who have some kind of core wound, something that maybe they were they missed something in their upbringing from childhood you know they might have had certain types of abandonment wounds or i'm not going to get into too much detail but in the case of prince harry considering that his mom did die when he was young and he grew up in that royal family where one might argue it's not the it's not the environment, not the type of family that exudes, that would exude the most warmth, you know, in the absence of his mom, that he didn't really get that need meant, that that need meant that his mother had, you know, Princess Diana, had she not died, she would have most likely been able to provide that to him and, and to, to William. So I would say that many people would say, yeah, there was something missing in Harry and that and most likely, what attracted Prince Prince Harry to, to Meghan Markle is that, in a way, he saw in Meghan this person who could fill that void. And Meghan, you know, if she is a narcissist, she, she would have noticed that. And everybody knows the, the story of the royal family because it's not, it's no secret. It's basically public knowledge. You can't really hide much from the public when you're a royal. So... The reason Harry fell for Meghan, or at least one reason, is because most likely she would have had she would have portrayed some form of maternal figure to him, which attracted him and helped fill that void. But that's what toxic people do, right? They they find what you're missing, they morph into that persona, so they can then, um, so they then, they can then ensnare you, cause you to to come into their orbit. But of course, that's just the beginning, you know. The next thing narcissists do when they get you is they try to isolate you from your support group. They try to isolate you from people who are important to you. And there's also something else. Narcissists love creating situations where they can then basically cause themselves to be a victim of some external event. They, in which case, they can then play the victim card and be very passive-aggressive or even aggressive about it. So, look, you don't marry a royal unless you're willing to accept the lifestyle, or at least accept there are certain things that are going to be different. When, when Meghan married Prince Harry, and, you know, they were basically second, second class to, to William and, and Kate Middleton, because William was, you know, the next, uh, the next in line for the throne, and Harry wasn't. So, in a way, Meghan and Harry... They, they were less important. And of course, Megan didn't like that. And Megan didn't like adhering by all the norms and rules and guidelines, um, which is being in the life, living life as, as a royal. So, she, you know, very quickly, she started, you know, thinking and talking about how people were treating her unfairly, that they were discriminating against her, and so on and so forth, basically being a victim. And she fed all that to, to Harry as well, um, which again, people can read into it in different ways, but for me, that's pretty obvious. So that, you know, he then started feeling like a victim. You know, he, he then started feeling like a victim, not just because of her, but because of his own s status, which is he'll never be king, but his brother will be. He's less important of a person, or at least that's how he saw himself. So all of a sudden you have these two victim people, two people in this victim mindset. And then, 
I mean, Megan's, my view is that Megan is most likely calling the shots. Like, she, she, I, she comes across to me as extremely manipulative. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say on that front. But the point about isolation, that was the other point I mentioned, that she excelled in isolating Harry from his whole support group, from everything he knew. Yeah, well, maybe the royal family isn't great. Maybe the system kind of sucks, even though so many people would, you know, die to, to live the life of a royal and to live in the wealth of a royal. But I'm, I'm, I'm under no delusion. You know, even though they're very wealthy, I don't think a royal life is easy. You know, even if you're the king or a prince or a princess, I don't think that's easy. And I, I wouldn't want that life for myself. And although many people would, but I'm just saying that... Um, that... I'm not, I wouldn't believe for a second that that's a, that's a, I wouldn't say it's a happy life for everybody. Maybe for some people it is, but not, not for everybody. But anyway, you know, moving back to the U.S. and, I, you know, put, causing Harry to despise his own family. Not only was he physically isolated, but he became emotionally detached and started tainting them and you know, ruining the reputation of the of the of the royal family alongside Meghan. I mean, all of these things are so narcissistic. So the way I see it, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that Meghan's very manipulative, that 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 she is very narcissistic, most likely a narcissist, and that you know, of course, she probably became that person because she probably felt broken in many ways from her own history, her own past. Whereas Harry, you know, he's broken in a whole different way and has his own wounds. But I, when I look at Harry and the way he speaks, I, I do sense a lot more authenticity and real empathy there. So I, I, even though he's a broken person, has his issues, and maybe he's easily manipulatable by certain types like Meghan, I personally don't think that he's, you know, like a narcissistic personality. He's just a bit lost. But I do think he's starting to realize or has for a long time realized that He's ended up isolating himself from the only people he could ever really trust. And I just don't know how long him and Megan are going to hold it out. It just doesn't feel right to me. Uh, I've seen similar relationships pan out in my life. And I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I honestly don't believe those things can end well. But in my view, neither, neither Megan nor Harry are happy right now in my view. Of course, Megan's not happy because if she is a narcissist, narcissists are never happy. Um, they, they get momentary pleasure by controlling people, by isolating people from, from their peer group, from their homes, from their family. You know, it gives them that sense of control that they can direct people's lives in that way. Um, so I don't think Megan can ever be happy. She only gets momentary pleasure by controlling people like Harry. And Harry, I just, I don't think he can be happy because how can anybody be happy if you're with a narcissist? Um, I guess the question is what's going to happen? A lot of people don't care. I, I don't care so much. But every now and again, when I think about certain things about their relationship, it's just interesting to kind of dovetail and draw those parallels between what's happening in their life and um, narcissistic personality disorder. So I'll leave it there. Um, if, you, if you like the royals, say that in the comment. If you hate the, well, not hate, if you dislike the royals, the royal family, you can... Uh, Mention that as well, or you don't have to mention anything. So, yeah, thanks for watching.